Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about the ideal gas law and we're going to be using it in a little different way. We're going to use the ideal gas law to actually determine the molar mass or density of a gas. How are we going to do that? Well, if you take a look at your standard expression for your ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, you'll notice that hidden in this moles term, hidden in the N, is the mass of our gas in the molar mass of our gas. Because remember, we can always calculate the moles we have of a gas by taking our mass and dividing by our molar mass. And that means that secretly, hidden inside of our ideal gas law equation, we have molar mass. And for the purposes of this video, and often in a lot of textbooks, you'll see molar mass written with this sort of script M. So it's kind of a funny M, uh, but basically you don't want to use the same M that stands for mass, so you use this big script M to stand for molar mass. Now the other equation we're going to use in conjunction with the ideal gas law is our density equation. Density equals mass over volume. And it turns out if you combine the three equations I have on the screen, using some algebra, you can rearrange them and get this equation. That the density of a gas is equal to its pressure times its molar mass divided by the gas constant times temperature. Now, I'll leave you who are very interested in algebra as homework to show how you can get to this equation from the ones I showed just a second ago. So this equation has a lot of different applications. What we're going to do in this video is we're just going to go through two common problem types that you'll see where you're going to use this density form of the ideal gas law. And one of the most common problem types you'll see with it just asks you to identify a gas based on its density, pressure, and temperature. Let me show you what I mean. So you might get a problem that says if you have 3.4 grams of gas in a 1.2 liter vessel at 293 Kelvin, if the pressure is 2.4 atms, could the gas be oxygen? And if you just read that problem and you hadn't looked at the new form of the ideal gas law, you'd be pretty confused. But because the new form of our ideal gas law allows us to calculate molar mass, we can actually decide if a gas is oxygen or not. How can we do that? Well, basically we're gonna calculate the molar mass, and if that molar mass is the same as oxygen, as O2, well then it could be O2. If the molar mass is different from O2, it couldn't be O2. So we can use this new expression of the ideal gas law in terms of density in the molar mass to answer a question like this. So let's go ahead and take a look how we do the problem like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and write down all of the variables we've been given and also what we're really looking for. So we've been given the mass. We know that the mass of our oxygen gas is 3.4 grams. That's told to us right up front. We've also been given the volume, and we've been given the temperature, and the temperature is 293 Kelvin. We also know that our pressure is 2.14 atms. What are we looking for? What variable are we looking for? Well, anytime it asks you to find out if it's actually oxygen gas or actually helium gas or actually any different gas, what it's really asking for is the molar mass. Because if you find the molar mass, you can identify whether or not the gas could possibly be oxygen. And hopefully that'll become more clear as we work through this problem. So what we're really looking for here is molar mass. And that's my best attempt at that script M. So we want to know the molar mass. And if, again, if that molar mass is equal to the molar mass of oxygen when we solve for it, then this gas could very well be oxygen. If it's not equal to mol the molar mass of oxygen, then it couldn't be. Okay, so let's take a look at our density equation and see what we have. Well, we have our temperature, and we have our gas constant, we have our pressure, but we don't yet have our density or our molar mass. So it's pretty common in these sorts of problems that you have to actually use a density equation like this guy to solve for your density and then go ahead and plug that in to your ideal gas law equation. Another thing to note here is we're going to be using the R listed on this screen, this 0 0.082057. And the units there are liters ATM per mole Kelvin. And that means that all the units we use have to be in liters, ATM, moles, and Kelvin. 
So if you're doing an ideal gas law problem, you always want to make sure that your units you're given for your pressure and volume and temperature and all that match the units for the R that you're using. In this case, we've been given units that match. Our volume is in liters, our pressure is in ATM, and our temperature is in Kelvin. So we're good on unit conversions for this problem, but that's something you want to keep an eye on. Okay, so since we don't have density, and we need density to get our molar mass, that's going to be the very first step we're going to do. We're going to calculate the density of this gas. And the density is just equal to the mass divided by the volume. And whenever we use density in this ideal gas law equation, we always need it to be in grams per liter. The liters are because of the gas constant is in terms of liters, and the grams because molar mass is generally in terms of grams. Luckily, we were given the mass in grams and we were given the volume in liters, so again, we're all set, and all we need to do is take 3.4 grams, which is our mass, and divide it by our volume, which is 1.2 liters. When we do that, we'll get the density of our gas is 2.83 grams per liter. And now you'll notice that we have density. So I put a question mark above that density, and now we can erase that, and we have that guy also. So we have four of our five variables, so we're ready to solve for molar mass. And it's gonna take a little algebra to rearrange that equation. So right, we have the equation density is equal to pressure times our molar mass divided by RT. And the first thing we're gonna to do to rearrange this guy is multiply by RT. And when we do that, we're gonna get rid of the RT on this side. And our new equation is gonna tell us DRT is equal to P times our molecular weight. And then we're gonna get that P over on the other side. And when we do that, by dividing both sides by P's, our P's cancel out. And what we eventually get is that our molecular weight is equal to our density times our gas constant times temperature divided by pressure. And now all we're gonna do is just plug our variables in. And so our density, we've been calculated as 2.83 grams per liter. And our gas constant is 0 0.082057. Our temperature is 293 Kelvin. And we're gonna divide that all by our pressure, which we know is 2.14 ATM. And when we do that, when we plug that into our calculator, we're going to get out 32 grams per mole. So could this gas be oxygen? Our molecular weight is 32 grams per mole. Take a second and think about that. Maybe pause the video. Tell me what you think. So since oxygen, a single oxygen atom, has a molar mass of 16 grams per mole, that means two oxygen atoms has a molar mass of 32 grams per mole. So the molar mass we calculated matches the molar mass for oxygen. So yes, this could be O2. So our answer is that yes, it could be O2. And the reason why is because our molar mass is 32 grams per mole, which matches the molar mass for oxygen. All right, let's take a look at one more problem type that you commonly asked to do with this density equation. One other thing you'll be asked to do is just to calculate the density of a gas at a pressure and temperature. And so this question asks, what is the density of helium gas at a pressure of 31.2 PSI and a temperature of 23 degrees Celsius? So we're asked for density. That's what we want to know. We're given that our pressure is 31.2 PSI. And we're given that our temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. Now, if you take a look at our density expression, what we need to be able to calculate our density is we need our gas constant, which we always have. We need our temperature, we were given that. We need our pressure, we were given that. We also need our molar mass, and right now we don't have that. How are we gonna figure that out? Well, we're told that the gas is helium. And since we're told that the gas is helium, we can just look up the molar mass of helium on the periodic table. And if you go to the periodic table, you'll see that the molar mass of helium is 4.0 grams per mole. And what that means is 
we have everything we need. We have the pressure, the molar mass, the gas constant, and temperature. So we have everything we need to solve this problem. But remember, before we plug in our numbers to our ideal gas law equation, regardless of the form you're using, we need to make sure our units are right. And here we see that we need to have liters for our volume, if we plug in a volume. And we don't need a volume in this case, so we're good. Our pressure needs to be an ATM, and our pressure right now is not an ATM, it's in PSI, so we're going to have to convert to PSI. Similarly, our temperature is not in Kelvin, it's in Celsius, so we're going to have to convert to Kelvin. So we need to do two temperature conversion, or we need to do a temperature conversion and a pressure conversion before we can start this problem. So, first let's do the pressure conversion. It turns out that in a one ATM, there's 14.7 PSI. So we can go between PSI and ATM just by putting one ATM up top and 14.7 PSI on the bottom. So basically all we're doing there is dividing by 14.7. Let me write that a little more neatly. So we have 1 ATM divided by 14.7 PSI. And when we do that problem, what's going to happen is our PSI is going to get canceled out and we will end up with 2.12 ATM. Now, we also need to do our temperature conversion. Whenever you're going from Celsius to Kelvin, all you have to do is add 273. So we're going to add 273 to that, and that's going to give us 296 Kelvin. Now, our temperature is in Kelvin and our pressure is in ATM, and so we're set to solve our equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down our density equation. We know that density is equal to our pressure times our molar mass divided by our gas constant times temperature. And we're just set to go ahead and plug in all of those variables. So our pressure we calculated in ATM is 2.12. Our molar mass, which we looked up on our periodic table, is 4.0. Our gas constant is 0 0.082057. And our temperature is 296 Kelvin. Now, you want to make sure when you plug this into your calculator that you put that whole denominator, the whole bottom, in parentheses. It's a common mistake to put 296 and the gas constant in separate parentheses, and then you'll get a different answer. So make sure you plug this into your calculator and make sure you get the same answer I do, and that'll tell you that you're plugging it in correctly. And if you plug that in correctly, you should get 0 0.35 grams per liter. So that is the density of our helium gas. If you have helium gas at this pressure and temperature, its density will be 0.35 grams per liter. So in every single liter of gas, you have about 0.35 grams of helium. So these are just two of the common problem types you might see with this form of the ideal gas law equation. This form that involves density and the molar mass. And it's a useful form of the ideal gas law because we can now actually identify what gases we have and calculate the density of gases that we have. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, please leave them below, and please subscribe to receive updates about future videos.